Thanks, Meredith. And before our second speaker, I had meant to uh, just give you a brief um, quote from Waleed Ali today. And he said, the history of asylum seeker policy in Australia will be remembered as a story of how successive governments legislated to justify a world of make-believe borders and managing compliance. And I think it's a very astute observation. Our second speaker today is also from Woodville High School, and this young man is Alex Diono, Diono, sorry, Alex, who is the Mayor Vice Captain at uh, Woodville. Alex, over to you. Twenty fourteen was a big year for Woodville High School. You can say that it was a coming of an age in terms of making us realise that not all young people have the same rights. This was the year of the Bring Back the Woodville Kids protests. One of the protests was held on these very same stairs at Gulfa Parliament House. I was in year 10 when my year 11 school captains of 2014, two of them were with us today, organised protests following two of our fellow students being taken back into closed detention at Wickham Point just out of Darwin. As a school community, we were in shock and asked, why have our fellow students been taken away from us? People with whom we shared lunch, people who we learned alongside, they have done nothing wrong. They attended school and they played in a school soccer club. Those young asylum seekers who had attended Woodville High School and 13 others fled into the community. They were on community detention as asylum seekers from Vietnam. I am so proud to stand that the public stand that student leaders in our school took. These students, these students who had experienced what it was like to be in prison in a detention centre in Australia had done nothing wrong except seek refuge. Coming to seek refuge as refugees by boat. The stories they told of what it was like to be in a detention centre in Australia were bad enough but I can only imagine what it would be like to be an asylum seeker forced to be detained in Nauru. Today I watched a video from young asylum seekers my age about what life was like on Nauru. I must say, I was horrified. There are 68 children and young asylum seekers imprisoned on Nauru. These young people are calling to the youth of Australia for help. They feel isolated and alone. They feel like they are being punished for seeking refuge from the horrors they faced in their homeland and place of exile. They hope for a better life, not in the countries they had to escape from and certainly not in the hellhole in Nauru. This is what they suffer. And this is what 260 people, including 37 children, are in fear of returning to. I cannot understand how our nation allows people to live like this. Nothing in my life has prepared me for this. Nothing that my family, or my church, or my school has taught me can make me accept such injustice. My school has a strong set of graduate habits which all the students aim for. One of those graduate habits is respecting others. This means behaving in ways that are right for yourself and others, valuing diversity and difference, and learning cross-cultural communication skills. Not only that, but one of our school values which we stand for is diversity. 
And what I cannot understand is how can we, as a community, encourage equality and diversity when the High Court in Canberra have paid the way for asylum seekers who are living amongst us right now to be sent back to Nauru. Australians like myself. I don't understand the politics of yesterday's High Court decision, but everything my family, my church and my school have taught me says, let them stay. Please let them stay.